Hey, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and the saga of trying to get the Stensnell one running great uh, continues. We had numerous attempts last year. As we all know, the L1 had a major catastrophe a number of months ago. Uh, like all radial engines, that they sit for a long time, they collect oil in the bottom cylinders. Well, to, to precaution you doing any damage, we pull the bottom plugs, we drain that excess oil, we pull the prop through. Sometimes we even spin the starter through to make sure it's clear. We did all that, went to start it, and guess what? It got oil in it, and we bent rod number five five cylinder and the reason for that is is that the 680 for some reason is the oil collects not only in the bottom of the cylinders but also in the two bottom intake tubes and what happens is even though it seems like it's clear as soon as the engine starts to fire it's sucking that oil back into the cylinders and it causes a little hydraulic lock and of course it bent the rod so we now have a little system on the two bottom intakes that have a little drain on it, so when it sits for a long time, we just leave that drain open, make sure that oil flushes out of there, and then we check, of course, for the cylinders having any oil, and uh, hopefully everything's okay. Thing I messed with at yeah, all. okay. So, you mean as far as where the like the cam got located or something? But Andy looked at it. Andy saw it, looked at it. I got him before I yeah. before I put the case on. Huh. Let's try it one more time. We got a fire extinguisher, but I wouldn't want to. No, this thing uses fire right uh, Yeah, usually, it usually starts pretty easy. And then you're using the same amount of prime. And, yeah. I mean, it's got, it's it blew flame out there, so it's got fuel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, usually it lights off pretty quick. It normally doesn't do that. Yeah. Stay pulling the nose case off. Well, that could help this thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make sure you know. Make sure you know. Andy like really looks at it and agrees. So. Oh man, that's a bummer. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So this is our little manifold drain that we installed so there's no oil in the manifold so we'll just do the normal pull through so I just that's plenty ready to rock and roll clear
watching, make sure there's got a couple of little pops there out of the exhaust. No flame. Disconnect the battery again if we're not going to. I mean, it's, it's, something's out of time. Or? Yeah, something's definitely out of time. I think it, I still think it's in the valve timing, but you know, we put the the wheel on it. And huh. Checked good on that, but. Well, get, uh, and you kind of get Andy to just so you get a second set of yes. eyes and just everybody's thinking about it. Yep. What is the deal? I think I think it's got to be off a of tooth on the, the, uh, the on the mag. No, or the, no, 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 on the on the cam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because on the cam, not the mag. Yeah, if it was the mag, it still it'd be firing. If it was, it'd be right. close enough that it'd yeah. be popping. Right. Huh. All right. Well. Hmm. Hey, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and uh, we're gonna give the Stinson here a shot. We tried running it a couple times, and we had some issues with it not running right. Uh, Andy did some work on it, and we're gonna go check it out now, so we'll see what happens. Okay, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and uh, we are about to run our Stinson L1. Uh, it was running great. We got Grand Champion Warbird at Sun and Fun with it a number of years ago, and then all of a sudden it just seemed like it was getting a little sick and it wasn't flying, didn't have any power and whatever. Anyway, so we started looking at it. It was one time I took off on a runway and I like, I got a 5,000 foot runway and I like barely cleared the phone wires on the other side of the interstate over here. I came around and I landed and said, I'm not flying until we figure out what the problem is. So we played around with it and we kind of learned there was a different governor and we were playing anyway. So we kind of got it running really good. And then all of a sudden one day, uh, it was running great actually, had a lot of performance. And I came out one day 
and uh, the, the guys were going to run it up. They pulled all the bottom plugs out because the oil drains down into the bottom of the cylinders, you know, if you don't fly it a long time. And they pulled the plugs out, they pulled it through by hand, they ran it through with a starter. There was absolutely no oil at all in the cylinders. And uh, so they put the plugs back in, they were getting ready to start it. They freaking went to start it and they got a hydraulic lock. Bent one of the rods, the rod was bent, and we found out on this engine, albeit too late, that it tends to collect oil in the lower manifolds, and the oil that we didn't see got sucked in, you know, after uh, after it got started. So anyway, unfortunate. And then uh, we went through a big process of working, changing some parts, fixing all the stuff. But what happened was in that process, something else got messed up. And I'm gonna have Andy here explain to you basically what they found and what they came up with. And hopefully we'll be lucky and it'll run. Well, fingers are crossed. So yeah, what we did, um, there was a, it was an unknown. We had a lot of, it was given indications of being incorrectly timed, which didn't seem particularly likely. Um, ignition or valve timing, well that was the first thing that we, we went to check. There turned out to be a problem with the synchronization of the points on the magneto. One set runs five degrees retarded to the other set. Uh, so we pulled that off, um, corrected that problem. I still don't know really how that even came to be. Um, put it back on. I wasn't here when we tried to run it the second time, but I believe the outcome was exactly the same, so that wasn't the issue. Uh, at that point I pulled the nose case off the engine with a view to checking the valve timing, which is a fair amount of work. Um, unfortunately, you really can't pull the case off and check the timing because as you pull the case off, you lose the timing. Um, the process then becomes to put it back as per the book, per the, the manufacturer's specifications, uh, which is what we've done. Uh, say a fair amount of work. Um, at this point, it's a complete unknown. We've cured. The magneto issue we had, we now know the valve timing is correct again. If it moved, I don't know why or how it did. Um, so we're still kind of in the dark until Kermit runs it up and then we'll find out. Um, could be a great egg on face day today because it may do absolutely nothing at all. In which case I shall start my weekend early and come back to it on Monday. But wasn't there, there was, we did find there was some kind of an issue with when the harness was taken off the first time. Yeah, there was, there looked to be some of the, um, some of the ignition leads looked to have, have become separated, for want of a better word. You can check them electrically. Um, if you like, you send a, a, a pulse of high tension, high voltage down the, the line and see if it, you know, essentially if it gets one into the other. Um, that's a little inconclusive, but in doing the work that I've done now, which involves, say, removing the nose case, you also have to take off the entire ignition manifold, all of the 18 leads that go with it. Um, I've actually extended, um, through scrounging up other parts, I've extended the leads so that they're not such a, <laughs> such a stretch fit as they were. Um, if there was a problem there, that problem is definitely cured. And there's no question of that because the entire harness is new. Still leaves us with the unknown of what was wrong in the first place. But if it chimes in and runs sweetly now, then it will be a valve timing problem. If it doesn't, as I said before, I shall start my weekend early. Good. And uh, Paul, we have pulled this through, right? Yes. And we've drained the manifolds yes. that we've always done. I left okay. the lower plugs out. Let's, and left the lower plugs out. Let's see what happens. <laughs> something the accessory drivers failed. Does it fail? It has to be. If that's what's happened, then we're done. We have to rebuild the entire engine. Let me get some more fuel. We'll get one more shot.
somewhat disappointed. I have no clue. I don't know where to look now. That is very frustrating. Oh, yeah. Your, frust off. your frustration is way behind mine. Fuel's off, max off, master's off. That's two weeks' work for absolutely nothing. But secretly, I thought it would be fine. <laughs> i got to be honest. Yeah. That'd be fine too. Ah, dang it. What? Ah, wrong. So, the, so the whole engine's got to come off and we got to freaking pull the back end well, it off. It sounds like that to me. It checks out when you, you know, time Yeah, I mean, I, you know, obviously we've done that. You know, we, yeah. we did the mag three or four times and everything was, everything was spot on. Absolutely perfect. Uh, mag was giving us a spot when we spun it up with our fingers. Um, I say I couldn't. I lost the valve time when I pulled the cover off, but I, you know, I, I stand up in court and say that it's right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. marked, and I put big, big black, sharpie lines on it, and had it double checked. I know the valve time is right. It just gives the impression that it's incorrectly primed, which means that something is not turning something else. This is pure speculation, but if you can imagine a, a shaft on a you know a wheel right, a right, shaft right, right. With, a, with a key yeah. in it, yeah. you know maybe when the engine locked up it broke the key. Yeah, you know we've retimed and it, it's but, just spinning. And, and, and this spin, is now it's spinning. What, what, in it, yeah. what would this be? I don't know. No, but I mean, what accessories are back there? That uh, everything's driven back there. It's off the back of the crank. There's a big, I think, right. A big I see. Wheel. Oh, that I see. Drive, okay. Yeah, that would drive everything. That would drive the dual mags. Right. Which so are a curse in themselves, but that's okay. Right. That would drive the dual so, mags. So, so the distributors. That's the most likely. One. Right. But we know mix. we we know everything is going properly from the mags to the plug when you put juice through it. But if it's not being to hit at the engine at the right time, that's yeah, the problem. Exactly. All right, it, that, it checks all right with the timing disc and it checks yes. all right ignition timing wise points open at 32 and 34. I think it's 27 and 32, I can't remember. Yeah, okay. But with a disc and turn by hand, it's absolutely perfect. But maybe under load it's Maybe not. under load it's not, I don't know. Oh my God. All right. That was my biggest fear right from when we started this that I didn't know, you know, really what I was looking for yeah, and, and I didn't find I anything. Ah. Oh. Now, so, I said, anyway, about it some more, and then we can. Yeah. Welcome to the wonderful world of restoration. <laughs> it's time for some naked in Jamaica rum. Naked in Jamaica. Okay, so a couple of days have gone by of head scratching and pouring through manuals, and I think Andy says he thinks he knows what the problem it is, so I'm going to let Andy fill you in on it. Well, yeah, think is the operative word here. Um, we, it's kind of hard to explain. The, we retimed the magnetos, which are done from the front side of the engine, and we'd retimed, the, we'd re, reset the valve timing, which is also done from the front side of the engine. Um, the smoking gun, perhaps, is that the distributors had run off the back side of the engine, and there's a, a theoretical uh, connection between those two, but if you've taken everything apart, that could have become lost and it is possible to assemble the distributors 180 degrees out from if you like the timing set at the front of the engine so what we've done is we reversed both the distributor drives well we we've, we've turned them 180 degrees to sync up with the timing at the front of the engine so now we're going to try that if that fails then well, i think probably more beer because um, I have nowhere else to go after this. But oh no, no, he can move up to naked in Jamaica rum. But just to clarify something very quickly, is the, the distributor thing on the back runs at half the rate that the front does. Is that correct, Andy? Yes. Yeah, yes. so basically what's happening is it could be 180 degrees out and run great, or if it runs this way, which is the, think, the way we think that may have been set up, then uh, it did what it did. So let's give it a shot and see what happens.
about. I'm not saying which distributor I worked on. <laughs> it wasn't that one. You were on the left side. I was. <laughs> and I remember Henry was on the right side, so. Well, yeah, just, it, was, it was really a clean start, too. Check real quick, too. I mean, can you can you can you see if there's a P lead in the center? That side looks okay. So that whole run was on one mag then? Yeah. Runs well, good well, on one mag. There is only, <laughs> there is only one mag actually. But. Yeah, there is only one. <laughs> All right, we're moving in the right direction. <laughs>